recording in progress. Well, there's an echo uh, saying that there is a recording in progress. I'm glad to hear that because I pressed the record button. How are you this morning, Pat? Yeah. Tell me, are you wet? Yeah, are you windy? No, no, no. As uh, Jude, uh, uh, there's definitely. I was out for a bike ride yesterday. And are you telling me you have an electric sort of... bike? Yes, uh, wow. I'm investing in one. The oh, days are going to pulse on a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a manual bike, as it were. So, so you, I, I, I got an electric car, which proved a disaster. You've got an electric bike, which has yet to prove <laughs> itself trustworthy. Yeah. The only thing, there's a fat bollocks like me able to go up a hole nearly that's nearly, you know, um, uh, uh, 90 uh, degrees. Is, uh, yeah, well, that's true. Uh, so I was out yesterday, but you know the funny thing, there's a wee... Uh, Sort of wooded land. Uh, we you know it runs for about hundred meters or so, or well maybe two hundred meters. But anyway, I noticed yesterday the leaves are falling. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, uh, autumn's are right. Jude, uh, without boring our, our two listeners, it seems now our seasons have changed. Or I used to remember August used to be on. I remember the golden eras of about mm. 75, 76, 77. Every August was you know spewing hot. Now it seems to have reverted to May, June, mm. you know, and mm. every year I know notice now that our, our summer seems to be around that period uh, that is really warm. So yeah, I, that's true. I, I wonder. I like, you know the kids; they're sitting inside studying for exams when the you know the sun is splitting the rocks, and yet then when they get their holidays, it's just, it's just, it's, this August I think in July it's just rained every day. Oh, I mean, that's, that's enough cool. about the weather. But, Aye, it yeah. is. It has been bad. Has been bad. I noticed the trees with the little patches of brown. From even before yeah. July was out, there was little past. Yeah, exactly, uh, exactly. Anyway, yeah. Anyway, okay, enough about the weather. Let's talk about the two uh, titans of broadcasting uh, that are in the news in the south, Tubridy with RTE, and in the north, Nolan with the BBC. Uh, now, um, Kevin Backhurst appeared on Prime Time, and he was on the news as well on RTE. He's yeah. their new director general, and he announced yeah. an astonished. I was going to say nation there, but to an astonished state. <laughs> you nearly <laughs> fell for your own one. That that, that he had, uh, that uh, Ryan Tubridy would not be coming back to RTE in the foreseeable future. Do you think, was he too tough there, Pat? Or did it, that seem to be your just judgment for Tubridy? You know, I stood, I stood up, it's almost, do you remember the famous Cy Pannonson where Roy Keane left the oh, Irish yeah. team in Kimbo? Yeah. That divided the nation. There's shades of that in this. I know people who think Tuberty uh, is uh, really the poster boy for all this, that it's re reflects an Ireland where there's an elite, where they get looked after, and then there's another Ireland where... And then there's other people who said, uh, Ryan Tuberty... And it, by the way, the report is right. Grant Tartan report said he did nothing wrong, and he has done nothing wrong. You know, if, if there's incompetence here, and there's... A, I was going to use an expression, the first word is... And the second word is up. <laughs> if there's that there, if there's that going on, it was Ortiz doing that, not Ryan Tuberty. So, Jude, you can take whatever you want, but the bottom line of it all was, apparently, this is getting down to the nitty gritty, Backhurst and uh, Ryan Tuberty and wh whoever were involved in the negotiations earlier this week, and apparently they had agreed a salary of 170000 which is well down in what he was earning before, mm -hmm. but still not to be sneezed at. There was all sorts of things going. Out comes the Grand Thornton report, and um, Ryan Tuberty right away issues a statement says that proves I was right. Now, Backhurst is sort of saying that uh, RTE staff is very, very divided. The country's very divided and Ryan should have kept his mouth shut. Uh, stop trying to say I'm the victim here, etc, etc, etc. And they could have eased him back in. But mm -hmm. once he issued that statement, you know, in other words, I think what Backhurst is saying, look, he, you're going for the narrative that uh, you're the victim and we're wrong and all the rest of it. Uh -huh. And there's just, uh, you've just balls it up for us. Okay, yep. key question, Pat. Do you do you agree with them? To a certain extent, they do actually. Jude, Jude there, there were faults on both sides. It'd have been far better if Ryan just had a shut up and started his and, and said from the first of September and back in uh, broadcasting again and oh, you know and let it die quietly and stop trying to play. You know, by the way, he is a victim. I, I, it's not the popular thing to say, but Ryan Toberty, uh didn't do anything wrong. The Grant Thornton reports that he didn't do anything wrong. He declared totally what he earned to the revenue. He disclosed publicly what he earned. It was RT put it up. Uh, you know, now somebody said he was broadcasting every morning and was he could have he could have sort of clarified his job to clarify that. 
Well, uh, I wouldn't clarify my Well, my, my well story. The, fact, the fact that you wouldn't clarify it wouldn't mean it was the right thing to do. Well, that's true, but I'd like, uh, that's not my responsibility. No, no, I take a point. I, I, I don't know. I think, from what I can understand of it, is that he had this deal where there was some money that he was getting that he did, the other people didn't know about, he knew about, and RT knew about. Uh, yeah. So to that extent, he was, uh, when he says, this is my salary, he actually was saying, this is my salary, but and then under his, under his uh, breath, and there's 150,000 more uh, you haven't been, heard about. I, I just think... He well, didn't you anything. Know, no, no, I'm stopping you, I'm stopping you there. He, yeah. Brian Tubbery never at any stage said, this is my salary. Resort, he said that was his salary. He has never once said that was my salary. I thought he, I thought he said, I thought, I thought that's what he said when he, as I, did you see primetime last night? No, but no, well, no, he said yesterday uh, was the had salary that, for 20, 21 and 22. Uh, he said the Grant Thornton report said his salary was what he said it was as salary. Uh, In other words, he said uh, Grant Thornton back up. That was my understanding of it. But I, I hope that just seems to me to be dancing on the head of a pin. In general terms, what happened was he was getting a salary uh, or money, right, from uh, a much greater amount than he said he was getting, than most people assumed he was getting. Uh, the figures were put up on the on the web, and this is his salary. Yeah. Now, he knew that his salary was going to be more than that, and he didn't. Now, yeah. if I'd been the same as you, like yourself, Pat, if I'd been in the same situation, I wouldn't have said, oh, listen, here's my hand up. I want you to know that I'm getting 150000 more. But yeah. I, somebody said in the discussion, that PR woman, I can never think of her name, she's married to one of the... <laughs> Sounds strange, but he's married. She's married to one of the savages of her ma. Uh, Terry, 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 Prone. Terry Prone, Terry Prone, the very woman. And um, she said it was not a good idea when you had things more or less sorted out to then poke your employer in the eye with a stick. Exactly. I, thought I thought that was true. I thought that was definitely true. That's true. The, uh, the, the other thing I would say about uh, somebody and Emma leaving because you can gobble up the whole time. I think. Yeah. Um, He's not he's not the greatest broadcaster that ever lit on this earth. I mean, good he's job. he's pretty good. He's pretty good. But I've seen plenty of others who are just as good, and I've seen better than him yeah. on many occasions. Yeah. So uh, this yeah. thing that there's a terrible loss to RTE or that RTE could never replace him, there's guys lining up now who would be more yeah. than happy to have a bash at it. I mean, the likes uh, of Patrick Kilty, I would say, would jump at it uh, uh, and might be better there, at it. Who knows? I think Jude, uh, uh, he's sort of angry. I think Tuberty is angry that he's become the poster boy for a scandal that was not of his making. And I, Jude, I have a certain sympathy for that. And I think it's the statement he issued after this week, you know, when the Grand Thornton report, I think it was a sort of defiant statement. Look, look, I am in the clear mm, here. Mm. But RT, Kevin Backhurst is the director general. He has to be take cognizance of the fact that the, the staff is very divided. Yes. The country's very divided. Yeah. And what Ryan Tuberty should have done, should he wound his neck down, even if he was in the right, he didn't need to prove it that he was in the right. That's right. And, and the fact is that, you know, that he deceived, not deceived, but he kept information about his salary or what he was getting, not only from the public generally, but from the other fellow presenters. And uh, yeah. they must have been pretty cheesed off because to think this guy's and getting bored. That is the and, and we didn't know about yeah. that. Uh, so, yeah. so I think from those points, the other final point, Pat, Kevin Backhurst is a new director general. What's the first thing a new director general will do? Show what a tough guy he is. Put some blood yeah. on the carpet. Uh, yeah. you know, now, I'm not saying that is his only reason for doing it, but I would say there was an element of that in it to show I'm firm. Aye. I can make decisions. Aye. Well, I, I think at this stage, he, he said he entered in good faith with Ryan Tuberty. And mm. I think when Ryan issued that statement, I, I, I think the, the sort of that pulled the trigger for Backhurst. He had no yeah. choice in a certain way. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on, move northwards, cross the Black Sows Dyke uh, to Nolan uh, in the BBC. What do you think? Um, he's been accused of several things, you, you know, bullying. And he was accused of sending naked pictures to people, which I incidentally, my present wife tells me uh, he has apologized for this morning, I think. Yeah, apparently so. Do, do, I, I don't know whether the allegations are true or not, so I'm not going to make any, any allegations against Mr. Nolan. But the only thing about it, 
I, I didn't hear. I, I think it's, it's just this morning he's come out and said, yeah, possibly he sent. Now I'm up, open to correction on that. Uh -huh. That he uh, that he apologised for that and so on. You know, I thought I, no one could have had it all uh, uh, this off at the past very early when our, uh, the Irish News made these comments. He could have said, right, uh, exactly. I would like to apologise for the fact that I did send this. It was a bit of crack at the time. No big deal or no harm intended. And I, I know it now. It's inappropriate, et cetera, et cetera. And yes, somebody did, did take me to yeah. uh, 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 sort of re report me to management for bullying. Uh, it was unfounded and I'm in the clear. But the fact that he refused to comment on them and the fact that uh, Sinn Féin and the DUP said the BBC management needed to address these issues made it a big story. Uh, that's right. Uh, well, you see, uh, a lot of people have... Uh got fed up with Nolan. I mean, uh, Sinn Féin mm. has been boycotting him now for several years. The SDLP are boycotting him since last March. Uh, but you see, you take uh, this thing about apologising, this sort of gets to me. I know they wanted uh, Tubridy to say he did wrong, and they want uh, they wanted um, Nolan to say he was sorry, and he apparently has said he was sorry. But Pat, supposing at our lowly level, right, at our lowly level, if I if it emerged that I sent you naked pictures, yeah. and then I, the next day I come on and says, "Oh God, I sent naked pictures of Pat. I'm sorry." What do you think? Yeah. How, what do you think a public reaction would be? You think they'd wait? You think they? Do you think they'd say, "Ah, oh, that's all right, Jude. You've said you're sorry. That's fine." Jude, where 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 I worked, if, um, uh, I would have got sacked for doing it. You would uh, where you work, you would have got sacked for doing it. No, I, I I don't know. Uh, I, well, I, I and the Derry Journal was very clear. Uh, we had a computer system, and if you sent anything inappropriate, protect, and there was degrees of uh, seriousness. But I would assume sending a, a photograph of a and I, I, I like the way you described it in your blog the other day of a guy and uh, and uh, what was the way you described it, Jude? I forgot. Uh, the, the, <laughs> Anyway, it doesn't matter. The naked man was uh, certainly enjoying himself. Oh, in like a state of excitement. Uh, yeah. State of excitement. And a state of excitement. I think that yeah. was the term yeah. Well, it, yeah. dude, that would have been a second offence as far as I'm aware when I was an employee. Oh, the, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, what sort of... It's just... It's such bad... I mean, I'm no prude, and you're no prude either. I know that. Yeah. So why, in the name of God, would you do something so sleazy and sort of disgusting, actually? I mean, is that old man talk? I, I just find I that. Do, 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 I can't believe this guy's a grown up. He's 50 years of age. He's not 18. Like, no, he's 50. And like, I, 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 I've seen these things about Nolan. My thing about Nolan's way beyond this sort of stuff. Nolan is now pandering to a certain audience, and it's, you know, this sort of uh, uh, what do you call it, loyalist hardline. Uh, uh, that, I think that, I have wonder. How BBC can justify under its public service broadcasting, you know, writ that this sort of stuff should, uh, like the SDLP don't um, uh, go on anymore, the DUP don't go on anymore, Sinn Fein don't go on anymore, and yet, and it seems to be that ratings matter more than sort of. And you remember the Bobby story thing? The, yeah. the, 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 he kept going and kept going and kept going. Um, even the uh, PSNAs sort of were saying, like they had ruled it out, the government had ruled it out, the Sinn Féin and the various other had ruled it out, but Nolan had his own agenda, and it looked like he was pandering just to one certain part of, as uh, you know, and that was the loyalist part of it. Well, like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even totally agree with that part. I, I think he might have a tendency that way, but in my experience of people in the BBC, the one thing they care about is, are we doing well with listeners or viewers? You know, that's the big central thing. And every other thing comes into the background after that. You know, it is the British Broadcasting Corporation, etc. So I, I would tend to say, you know, he was, he, if he had, say, a certain core element of, say, the DUP that he was pandering to, if if he if that's what he was doing, I think he was doing it because he knew that would rile up Sinn Feiners and, and nationalists generally, rather than that his heart and soul was with the DUP. I don't think that would be. what his heart and soul are. But Jude, I don't think it's, the, uh, you know, I am, it's only a personal opinion, and no one could say that's a lot of bad. Yeah. I, am, I am doing, uh, you know, but what I'm, I'm my personal opinion is he seems to be pandering all the time to controversy and riling people oh, yeah. up rather oh, than yeah. serious broadcasting. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's absolutely right. That's right. Hey, it's the old first in the bag. 
shake it good and hard and say, okay, uh, see, then, why, then, then, why, why can't you agree? Yeah. Why can't you agree? There's people. The, the one yeah, thing, yeah. final point very quickly, Pat, there was a lot of uh, hoo-ha about um, the fact that he had planted people in the audience, members of staff. He's denying that totally. It really works he, yeah, he that's say, right. He, he said, denies that. Yeah. But uh, frankly, that wouldn't bother me at all. I, I always assume that's the case. I assume that's the case with question time on the bit, you know, from London or wherever they send it, have it from yeah. uh, with Fiona Bruce. But although she denies it, she says it's all very carefully calibrated. Um, but it's just so yeah. what if you did? It makes sense in a way. You're looking for somebody who will give a nod to point out there's a guy up here. It'll be good to get uh, talking. Uh, who's and getting when very I, agitated, yeah. When I was, um, there was times I was actually on this show up at the desk, which wasn't always very comfortable. But on several occasions, I was invited to be part of the audience at the very front. And he yeah. would come to us and he would say your name and he would say your background and so on. And he would yeah. do the, the whole, there's a range of maybe eight people each show. Yeah. And they were sort of subs bench, as it were. And he would go to them, but he would, yeah. he would not acknowledge who they were. I think that the, people, the thing that people are complaining about is that these staff members were hidden. They're, nobody knew. That everybody thought they were just ordinary members of the audience. Uh, I think. Yeah. I, I just think. I mean, I just think that's a storm in a teacup. Doesn't matter. Taking taking the attention away from. No, no, I, I I wouldn't have a problem in the least with that. Even if he did do it, he's not denying I, that I, he did. I, it seems yeah. to me missing the point. Okay. I, I, uh, exactly. Let's leave him with Richard. Sorry, I mean, uh, Jude, uh, you all, before you go, uh, I'm not well, going anywhere. On, see, no, but no, no, but before you go off topic, we're <laughs> seeing we're on about broadcasters. Did yeah. you hear the massive row on RT earlier this week between Joe Duffy and um, uh, Brian Murphy? No, but I read about it. Did you listen to it? I no, I only caught bits of it. Uh -huh. uh, Just very uh, briefly, uh, Pat, uh, tell uh, us what, what happened there. Uh, basically, Warfield, uh, Following on from Ooh Ah Up the Ra, uh, the failure on Tuesday, a Limerick uh, lady, a Limerick group lady rang in and uh, said, were, were the Wolf Tones not just stirring up people from, mm -hmm. you know, by singing songs like this, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Anyway, they must have rang, uh, Lifeline must have rang Brian Warfield to come on. And anyway, he and Joe got in there. Uh, Joe said, that, uh, you know, this old guff from, you know, and try and stop telling us that Ooh Ah Up the Ra and glorification of the IRA violence and all that sort of stuff. He and Joe got into, Brian Warfield is now, uh, that's the short version and the potted version, Joe. Or Jude. So uh, Brian Warfield has now uh, said he's making an official complaint to RT that uh, he was treated, he says he was ambushed, that uh, he was treated with a total lack of respect and that Joe's personal opinions uh, overshot uh, his uh, um, so-called impartiality. Which, so what, did, what, did, what did Joe actually say? What did Joe say? He said was, uh, that, all right, basically he said he, uh, uh, that well, what he was implying was uh, Warfield and uh, the Wolf Tones were uh, musically rubbish. They were uh, uh, promoting glorifying uh, violence, cetera, glorifying cetera, violence, gl glorifying violence, all that sort of stuff. Oh. And Warfield says, "I've never murdered anybody. I am not a member of the IRA." Uh, what he called, we're uh, what we were basically. Uh, he says uh, he came out with the line. He said. He saw it on a wall in Glasgow, who out there, and he thought, you know, that, and that's why he called it the Celt uh, Celtic mm. Symphony, so mm. on. Now, uh, Joe described that as I've heard all this old guff before, and he, he basically mm. said that um, Walt Tones were an awful group, etc., etc., etc. So mm. on. So, uh, mm. Joe, I think Joe was referred to as a sticky by Warfield <laughs> during, during. Why so would he say a thing like that, Pat? Why would he say a thing like that? I, I think that might have railed Joe a wee bit, you know. Joe, you see, Joe, Joe, Joe was a paid up member, wasn't he, of the Labour Party? And his student uh, I remember, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, days, yeah. And that was quite a while ago. Um, so yeah. maybe that's what he was talking about, but maybe not. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I, I, I we, you and I are agreed that we are up there as a you know, storm and a thimble, <laughs> never mind a teacup. But Joe I, Brawley Joe, says, when you consider what Joe that? Brawley says, we shouldn't, they, we really have to get rid of that. That's the kind of thing we mustn't have. He's totally against it. He says that's just showing a lack of respect and so on for our Protestant neighbours. I'll make a simple point. Okay, I, in a way I agree with that, Judah. But here's the thing. Two seconds before, and these young people at this fair were singing a Neil Diamond song. And then they, that, that, that it was, all tones were on and they started singing along with that. Big deal. Judah, it wasn't as if... Uh, 
you know, I, I saw on social media, a guy said, uh, 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 people going around uh, uh, and Derry was uh, thing supporting the, the parachute regiment. How dare they condemn that and then sing songs? Jude, can you imagine anybody, a Republican, going down the Shankill Road and saying, I hey, know the, the Shankill bombing was, was great crack, you know, mm-hmm. or just mm-hmm. it. Singing mm-hmm. a song, by the way, and as uh, Warfield said, um, what do you call it? Ooh, up the row was a lullaby compared to the we're up to our necks and fiend and blood and uh, the one uh, you know and f the pub. He mm-hmm. said he says it's just a, a, a sort of throwaway line in the middle of a song. And of course, we have thousands of marches by an anti-Catholic organization every year. Not just yeah. somebody saying a few and, words. And, he, and I think his point was a lot of those people condemning ooh, up the row, which is purely a song, and it's you know he says you know it's a bit rich for uh, people who have supported a culture. That's, you know, seriously sick there. Yeah, you're right. Okay, uh, so what, what will we go to next, Pat? Will we go to, uh, i tell you what it will do, just a couple of minutes in this, and then we'll go to that other um, uh, interviewer man. The Rosa Trolley is going to be yes. showing, I think, I think it starts, does it start this weekend coming up? I think no, I think it starts on Monday night, is it? Monday, Monday night. It starts yeah, on the Monday yeah, night yeah. It's on a Friday. So there's some whatever. people there's Justine McCarthy has written an article about it and she says, Oh God, get this thing off. It really is um yeah. terrible. There's no will, there's no men on it. Um there's uh oh, they're allowing married women, wow, big deal. Um so she's totally critical of it. it says judging people on appearance, etc. Is that how you see it, Pat? Jude, I've got it. I've never watched the Rose Tully. I really what? genuinely haven't. Ever. I, I find it not ever, even for never, a few seconds. Never was. No, I'm, I'm made of fact on a Monday night. Oh, there's somebody on or someone, whatever. Mm. But I can give you an unequivocal guarantee that I've never watched it for more than five minutes. Jude, no, it just doesn't add for me. And it, it, it is a but. I don't know what, what uh, I feel well uncomfortable. Some of the, you know, what do you mean? Is it but, but, but a clenchingly uh, embarrassing. Ah, exactly. <laughs> Brilliantly put. Squeaky <laughs> bum time. That's <laughs> like Alex Ferry. You sit watching it. And some of the interviews should Daddy O'Shea, uh, you know, and they're trying to make, you know, like a uh, sulk out of a uh, pig's ear on occasion. You no, know, he's almost dragging someone. Out. And then they do their party piece. And usually, Jude, somebody starts singing and they're so far off key, they should work for Yale. You know, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, it's so oh, bad. Yeah, it's bad. And then they go, <laughs> Uh, then, 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 then they they start maybe giving the home or something else, and halfway through it they forget. And Jude, uh, it is so bad. Uh, now here's the thing: somebody said it's uniquely Irish, and it's all the rest of it, and so on, and it's part yeah. of our culture yeah. and our heritage. Fair yeah. enough, Jude. But like, hey, Miss World used to be broadcast when I was a young fella, and yeah. and like it was a meat market. The, the girls were told he's just a drown, a turn rounds where and their swimsuits, mm. so everybody could have a look at their backsides and so on. Like it was a cattle market. Well, that's true. That's true. Um, and that was part of Justine McCarthy's uh, article today. I was thinking about yeah. this, you know, and like cleverness or intelligence is a gift, right? Yeah, either yeah. you have it or you haven't, or you have it to different degrees. And yeah. if somebody, if you said to somebody, geez, there's a smart person, that woman's really yeah. smart, or that man's really clever, right? You would say, ah, well, that's yeah. fair enough. Or no, I disagree with you. Nobody would say, how dare you single out cleverness and start going on about that? Yeah. But yeah. if you say, yeah, beauty is also a gift. You know, some of us yeah. have it, some of us, some other people don't have it. Uh, so why is it that we can talk about one and uh, commend people or be a wee bit l- less effusive with them about cleverness or mental ability? And uh, in terms of physical beauty, we say, uh, oh, God, you dare not say, don't say that about that woman. Or, you know, uh, don't even say she's looking. That's wrong. Yeah. Uh, what do you uh, think? Uh, yeah, no, it has, it has becoming a, a thing, you know. Uh, in fact, we belong to a generation now that uh, I think the values that we had, like, have you said, I've heard you said, God, she's a lovely looking woman. I, I can nearly hear, you know, with all of, you know, the whole right on uh, females going, oh, how dare you? You know, don't don't, don't <laughs> describe anybody. But you should. I always think the laws of attraction haven't changed. You know, uh, a wee fella goes down the streets and she's a good looking girl. Like, I know, and if a girl, you know, so, so remember the famous one about uh, women really don't uh, notice a man's looks. And somebody says, right, why, why do women go for Robert Redford rather than Les Dawson? 
you know. <laughs> so I tell them the bollocks as well. No, this sort of thing. No, that's just sex as old men. It's bollocks. Uh, we, we're all attracted to people by their looks. That's a fact. Uh, that's, uh, there's no, there's no two ways about it. That's true. But uh, not only that. It's just so there's other factors as well. And if it's okay to sing aloud, but, uh, say yeah. cleverness or you know skills uh, or something like that. Yeah. Well, why is it not okay to single out, you know, uh, physical attractiveness? That's not to say, of course, you should go around and say, oh, you're an ugly looking so-and-so. You know, that's no, insulting. No, no, no. Or no, just that's that. insulting to say to somebody, you're a stupid idiot. You know, well, they're both yeah. insulting. Yeah. You, you know, you commend people when they have the quality. If they don't have it, keep your mouth shut. That, that's yeah. going to be violent. Um, anyway, a very interesting little general topic that. Well, you want to talk about Michael Parkinson? Yeah, my, uh, the Michael Parkinson did, uh, in a way, I, I think, in, in a, how can you explain Michael Parkinson? He was a sort of a cultural icon, uh, and he reflected British society in a way. There's a friend of mine who said years ago, the difference between Terry Wogan and, and um, Michael Parkinson uh, when it came to a chat show was, Wogan was the star of his show all the time. He was front and centre, and he said Parkinson faded into the background and his show, that the stars were the stars, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And that he asked the questions, but you know, but yet in a way, uh, uh, his role was even more important. No, Wogan would come out, and I loved Wogan. I thought Wogan was very good. You know, he was very uh, extrovert, and uh, he was very clever, and so on. But Parkinson's some of the interviews Parkinson uh, did Jude, will last a very long time. Like interviews with people like uh, Muhammad Ali, who reflected uh, over the course of a lifetime, showed mm -hmm. uh, so many different aspects of the man's life and about the life from which he came. And mm -hmm. look, he made Billy Connolly a star, no. you know. And as he said himself, he reflected a He left school at 16, Jude, with two yeah. O level and got to the very top of the tree, which is uh, quite an achievement. Yeah, well, I think he was quite bright at school now. I'm not sure why he didn't go I went to grammar on. school. I went to grammar yeah, school. I was a grammar school, school boy. Yeah. His father was a yeah. minor, and you could sort of see that yeah. quality coming through in him. You know, there was a certain ruggedness in his features, maybe. Yeah. Here we are talking about people's yeah. looks again. But uh, I, I yeah. liked him a lot. He saw himself as a journalist first, I thought, and that was a good yeah. sign. You know, you get these guys who are stars and then they become uh, interviewers. Uh, you can mm. tell that he came out of a school where you did interviews and you found out things about guys and you asked them questions. So you built up a picture of yeah. them. And that's what he did when he got uh, his job on TV. There was something quite nice about him. I mean, he didn't sort of fawn on, on um, interviewees. He didn't suck up to the public. He just he was a yeah. normal sort of straight up, obviously intelligent guy yeah. um and you know he treated people with respect and he had a sense of humor as well so i i did yeah. like him i used to read him when he was writing for was it the observer or the sunday times or something yeah, like that it was the observer yeah uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, you know but uh, how, uh, how many how many present interviewers would be capable of uh, would be acceptable to write for the uh, that level of journalism very few I would say. absolutely very very few no but that that gift you know he, he, and uh, the way you said, like he said, he got to kiss Lauren Bacall, and what else? He got to interview uh, James Cagney and Jimmy Stewart, and all that. He says people who were uh, his idols. So he loved the life too. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. That's good. Well, God be good to him. He's gone now. And this is awful. All these yeah. people have been part of your life for so long, and then they're gone. They're yeah. gone. Okay. Yeah. Final question, Pat, because we're, we're shitting over back to our old bad habits of hanging around too long. Um, yeah. yeah. Bidenomics is one of the things that's being uh, discussed. The fact, I think it's in the Irish yeah. Times today as well, the fact that you have in the States, the economy apparently is humming right along and unemployment yeah. is really down. It's sort of the other side of you know, Britain. You think of Britain and then yeah. turn it around the other way around. It's doing very well uh, in terms of economics. And yet most people aren't too keen on Joe Biden. Um yeah. Is this going to be the end of him? Is is um, you know is that it? Are we going to get Trump again? Yeah. But no, I don't think we'll get Trump. But I, I haven't said that. About well, unemployment, so inflation's down to something like three percent, down from yeah. ten. Uh, wages are uh, increasing. It's the best. You know, did, uh, I remember reading it was called the New Deal. Roosevelt. Yeah. Remember, and the and after the big recession, the night uh, the Wall Street crash. Roosevelt, and it was called socialism because he went for major capital programs, you know, building bridges and roads and all the rest mm, to mm, stimulate mm. the economy. And it, 
that's led to the boom, the baby boomers. Biden, uh, apparently Americans and America's infrastructure, the bridges, etc., falling down now. So he went for this trillion dollar type thing, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's it's working. Uh, and the wages are rising, and it's, they're rising across all sectors. It's not just confined to the mm -hmm. rich. And, and so yet, on. But and the yet. problem is he's eighty, not yet anyway, but he's eighty, he'll be eighty two at the next election. Uh, mm -hmm. to, so, mm -hmm. and he's fallen a couple of times. And I think he, the Americans like their presidents to be young and uh, virile and uh, reflect what they see themselves as. So uh, it's going to be two old men. And of course, look at the, well, the other st st stage of Republicans. Trump will be heading towards, what, 78, 79 mm -hmm, at the next election. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. It's not exactly uh, whatever. Uh, yeah, you do. I agree with you. You do like to see your your um, leaders exuding energy and, uh, you know, full of ideas and uh, lots of... Um, Sort of strength of character coming through, uh, whereas uh, Biden and and Trump uh, may well they may have certainly Trump may have a personality, but it's a stinking one. Uh, the trouble is, we the, it's an easy way out when it comes to making decisions about uh, who you'll vote for. If you say I like guys looking who look like JFK, you know, uh, yeah. then you don't have to do any thinking any further. The truth of the matter was JFK's. Uh, tenure as president really didn't do very much except nearly cause a nuclear war. Um, exactly. Uh, so so we, we look back to those days and we say, oh, wonderful Camelot and all the rest. But we really were just judging him simply, once again, on physical appearance. I but no, remember James Carville was the guy for planting its economy, stupid. No, it's not. In America, uh, a lot of other things come into play. I thought it was the economy, Joe Biden, be won that by a mile, uh, mm. and he's not. It's basically, uh, um, what do you call him, uh, Andy Kenny, the, the slogan at the election uh, after the, the recession was keep the recovery going. Mm. There was almost an argument, I know the arrogance there, that we have got the Ireland recovery. For mm. about a million people, uh, there was no recovery whatsoever. Yeah. They were what? paying double tax. They were getting all yeah. sorts of charges, et cetera, uh -huh. et cetera. And there was, it came across almost as arrogant. So the but, personality and identity has got a lot to do with it. Aye, that's true. And, and, and I hadn't got the most uh, striking of personalities. Um, yeah. I feel sorry for Biden. I actually think they're underestimating, though. They're underestimating yeah. uh, the extent to which people, when it comes to the crunch, they'll say, do I want things to keep going I, where do, they are? I, I, when it, exactly. When, when, when it comes to campaigning, and the, uh, he can stand up and say, look, this is my record. You mm. know, it does help. You know, uh, we're heading towards the, Okay. Results, so All right, Pat. We, we wouldn't do it to bore either of our viewers. Um, <laughs> uh, are you looking forward to the coming week? Um, I'm certainly... I, I, uh, uh, the, the Rose of Tralee and uh, Tralee, uh, uh, she, she was beautiful and What fair, about like the women's football the final is going to be on on Sunday? Sunday morning. Aye. I, I presume you'll be, be sporting 1966 all over again. All over again. I, I, we'll I, never I, hear that. Are you going to be cheering for England? Uh, probably. Liar. <laughs> liar. Liar. <laughs> Fans on fire. Fans on fire. Okay, bye.